All right, hope you're doing okay. Hope is a brilliant, brilliant time to you. It's another really uh, beautiful time that I'm here and uh, I wanted to speak today about the time of tribulation. Uh, this is a very, very exciting, exciting topic. If you're here, I wish if uh, you can stay with me till the end of this. I have so many Bible verses. Actually, if you have a Bible, you can just, uh, a, a pen and a paper, you can just write the verses down because I'll be speaking so fast. And uh, also, uh, there's too much to speak about, but of course, I can't speak everything all at once. So I will um, uh, require or just ask you if you have a place, you can write the Bible verses, you can write them, and then you can check them uh, maybe later because they are quite, 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 quite many. Okay. So... It's so much exciting learning about the end times and uh, learning about the things to do with uh, the times of the end and uh, how it will be. This is a very exciting time and uh, we are really, we are living at, uh, uh, actually we're living at the times of the end. And these, these are times that you cannot really say what is what because everything just looks, <laughs> I wouldn't say it looks confusing, but have you ever been in a situation whereby you can't really tell what is what? Everything just seems like is the Bible being fulfilled right before your eyes. Have you ever seen something like that? Right before your eyes, you can see the Bible coming alive. And these are the times that we are living, very unpredictable times, very, very confusing times. And if you don't know what is uh, awaiting you and what is uh, coming up in this uh, times of the end, then you'll be caught by surprise and it, it will be so difficult for you. So tonight I'll be speaking about uh, how will the, you know, the seven, uh, the seven years of tribulation be like, how will it be like, what uh, is going to happen, uh, what the Antichrist is going to do, what will happen to the, you know, people, uh, tribulation saints during that time. And also, uh, likewise, what is going to happen to, you know, the beasts, what's going to happen to Satan, what, uh, what are the judgments of God, you know. I have uh, quite a number of uh, things that I was speaking about, and this is so interesting and also very chilling. It's it's like you'll be listening to a horror movie in audio. <laughs> so brace yourself. Now, first and foremost, we'll uh, we like to check and we ask ourselves, what exactly is the tribulation? What is the tribulation? Now, tribulation is the end time. You know, the end times uh, when we'll be having a great worldwide catastrophe, you know, a lot will be happening during the end times and uh, it will be a period of seven years full of catastrophe, full of problems. Now you think you have problems, you ain't seen nothing, you know, <laughs> right now there's nothing you've seen. Problems are coming and they're coming in a big way in a way that uh, you cannot be able to phantom, you know? You'll be seeing your mother, your sister, your brother, they are there, they are dying, and there's nothing you can do if you're left here behind. And uh, this is just to encourage people just to get saved because this time, even for those who say, I know I can manage, uh, my friends, I don't think you'll manage. It's really hard. And if you will manage, it will be out of a lot of pain and a lot of trouble and a lot of uh, problems that you'll only be able to make it, okay? So the tribulation time will be one of the most trying times in the world. Uh, actually, it will be the worst that there has never been any other time in the history of the world, which will be like the time of tribulation. And there will never be any other time in the world which will be like this time. Like the Bible told us already that there'll never be any other time like this, okay? So first and foremost, uh, let's go to uh, the book of Matthew 24, because that's where we uh, get the whole baseline of this story. And uh, we'll be able to see exactly what uh, the Bible says. We just go hoping, hoping, you know, uh, you can write the verses because there are so many. If you have a, a, a pen and a paper, you can write them down. So now um, let's check Matthew 24, 3. It tells us, and as he sat upon the mountain of olives, the disciples came unto him privately saying, tell us. What shall these things be? And what shall be the sign of thy coming and of the end of the world? You see, these people are asking Jesus, tell us how will it be at the end of the time, at the end of the world, towards that, towards the time of the end, how will it be? And of course, Jesus answers and he gives them a, a very good breakdown, you know, a story about how will it be. You can just go through the whole book of uh, Matthew 24, but I'll read a couple of
couple of verses. Verse 7 says, For nation shall rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom, and there shall be famines and pestilences and earthquakes in diverse places. You see what will be happening? A lot of trouble will be there, you know, for those who are saying, I can go through it. You see, it's, it's only climate change. We're going to change here and there, you know. No, it's, it's not going to be like that. God will be judging the world at that time. So it will be so difficult for you. And let's hear some verse 11. It says, and many false prophets shall rise and shall deceive many. So get, be ready for deception. People will deceive you. They will deceive you so much in, in a way that you cannot be able to explain. And thus, let's also see verse 15 to 21. It says, when therefore you shall see the abomination of desolation spoken of by Daniel the prophet, stand in the holy place, whosoever readeth, let him understand let them which be in Judea flee to the mountains. This is addressing the, the children of Israel, you know, the Israelites, the Jews. He's telling them, when you see what was spoken by the, the Daniel the prophet, please run to the mountains. Go, 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 go. Don't stay in the cities. Don't stay in Judea. Don't stay in Jerusalem. Don't stay anywhere in the city. Run to the mountains and hide yourself because this guy is going to finish all of you who are going to stay. Let him be... Uh, let him which is on the housetop net not come down to take anything out of his house. Neither let him which is in the field return back to take his clothes. And woe unto them that are with child and uh, to them that give suck in those days. Oh, it will be so, so troubling time for the mothers who have, you know, kids and the, the, their children are suckling and things like it will be so difficult for them. And then uh, it says, verse 20, but pray ye that your flight not be in the winter, neither on the Sabbath day. Now, why is Jesus saying that, uh, pray that your flight is not on winter? Because in Israel, during winter time, usually very, uh, a bit more, it's cold and things are almost standstill. And also in, on Sabbath, you know, uh, uh, in Israel, uh, we usually have this thing that we call uh, the Sabbath day. You know, they, they really honor the day of sabbath so every business is closed uh, shops are closed you know buses are not moving things are not moving so imagine trying to escape at a time when nothing is uh, operating it will be so difficult for them so that's why i say make sure pray that it is not on a sabbath day for then shall be great tribulation you see that word great tribulation such as was not since the beginning of the world to this time nor ever shall it be so it will be so difficult so threatening, so bad during that time, if you'll be here. So you better just make sure that you're not here. Now, uh, another point, this period will last seven years, okay? This period of tribulation will last seven years, seven good years, okay? Now, we have just seen uh, the Bible telling us in Matthew 24, uh, verse 15, it telling us that when you therefore see the abomination of desolation spoken of by Daniel the prophet, stand in the holy place, whosoever readeth, let him understand. No, we have to ask ourselves, what is this abomination of desolation which was spoken by Daniel the prophet? And this abomination is in uh, Daniel 9, verse 27. Okay, we can go there and check. And it says, and he shall confirm the covenant with many for one week, who the Antichrist, this guy, he will come and he will pretend to be, you know, the friend to Israel. Right now we are seeing um, uh, in Israel, we are seeing a story of a certain guy who is uh, being, they are saying the Messiah is here. <laughs> There's a certain guy called, uh, G, I don't know, it's Jihadzu or something, Bin David, and uh, he's there and he's saying, hey, I'm the Messiah. And people are kissing his hands and, you know, celebrating at the temple moment and saying we have the Messiah. Could it be the same guy? No, I don't know. You just go and do your own studies and let's wait and see. Let's wait and see. But this is what the Antichrist will say when he comes. He shall confirm the covenant with many for one week. Which covenant? Remember, uh, there will be some covenants which have been made between the nation of Israel and, uh, uh, you know, the, he, her neighbors and also some uh, nations which have always hated Israel before. And this one we have started, we, we started seeing this uh, during the Trump's reign, you know, uh, Donald Trump uh, reign when he, he did different agreements of peace, you know, between Israel and, uh, and uh, I don't know, Saudi Arabia and what, 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 and we have been seeing them happening all through. So this Antichrist, when he comes, he will confirm that covenant. He will confirm it. He will say, now, these covenants which have already been made, now we want to confirm them and we want to make sure that 
there is a lot of peace in Israel. Of course, this is what he's going to do. So he'll confirm this for one week. Now, a week is, uh, as, um, according to God, is seven years. And I'm going to explain to you. I'm going to show you. Let, let me first uh, read here. For one week. And in the midst of the week, so it's seven years. In the midst of the week, three and a half years, at the middle, he shall cause the sacrifice and oblation to cease. He will basically go to the temple and declare himself that he is God and say, no, nobody else can be worshipped. It is me. I am God. And then that's the time they'll realize this was a fake. This guy was a fake. We thought that uh, he was just, um, you see, the Jews are waiting for they're not waiting for a divine messiah. They're waiting for someone who is human nature, like you and me. That's the person that they are waiting for. And they know this is an anointed person. You see, uh, messiah, basically, it means an anointed person is another translation of a Christ, you know, is an, means an anointed person. So he's just a human being, according to them, who is anointed to rule, you know, during the messianic kingdom and, uh, you know, make Israel to be a more prosperous uh, nation and bring an era of peace and things like that. So it'll be a human being. Of course, they'll expect he prays to God, you know, God in heaven. But now during the middle of the seven years, he will declare himself that I am the Messiah, just enters in the temple and says, worship me. And then these Jews will realize this guy was a fake. How can we worship him? And he's not, you know, Jehovah God up there in heaven. So he's a fake. And now, See, uh, and for the overspreading of abominations, he shall make it desolate even until the consummation, okay? And that determined shall be poured upon the desolate. So I know these are confusing words, but let me just give you a, a, a general overview that it will be so difficult and people will be in doing a lot of abominations, uh, bad things against God. And they are, you know, they are, they are blaspheming God in different ways. And this will happen until that time when the, what is determined shall be poured upon the desolate. What is determined? God's wrath is going to be poured. So the Israelites have been told, when you see this guy comes, run to the mountains. That is the abomination of desolation. When you see him get into the temple of God and declare himself that he's God, run to the mountains. Whosoever is in Judea, go to the mountains. Now, you may ask, but this one is talking about for one week. Now, according to God, a week, it's basically, uh, you know, there's what we call the Bible code, you know, it says, it can say one week to mean seven years. Let's see, this one, this code is broken in the book of Ezekiel, Ezekiel 4, verse 6, it tells us concerning this, Ezekiel 4, 6, it tells us, uh, 4, 6, it says, and when thou hast accomplished them, lie again on thy right side, and thou shalt bear the iniquity of the house of Judah 40 days, listen, I have appointed thee each day for a year. So 40 days, each day for a year. So a day is in representation of a year. And of course, you can see in the book of Numbers uh, 14, to 30, uh, 14 verse 33 to 34, it also speaks about the same, a day for a year. So I don't want to go there so that I don't waste time. Now, another thing which will happen during the time of tribulation is uh, just this event of the tribulation will happen immediately after the rapture. You see, there are people who are saying, uh, you know, we have to go through the tribulation. We have to go through this. There's no rapture and things like that. I was seeing a brother of mine, uh, we were arguing, a friend of mine uh, on Facebook, we were arguing that, you see, there's no rapture. Some people will go to the wilderness and blah, 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 and a lot of story. But I want to confirm to you that there's a rapture because the Bible tells us one thing, there is rapture. And uh, until the church is out of here, there is no way that the tribulation is going to start. So there is going to be a rapture and then the tribulation starts. Why? Let's see what the Bible says in 1 Thessalonians. It gives us this assurance that will be out before the tribulation time starts. And make sure, my brothers and sisters, make sure that you be partakers of this time, of this living out. Because if you don't live, uh, this, what I'm about to tell you right now, I don't think if you can handle, if what I'm going to teach you today, uh, if you'll handle this, I think, uh, you, maybe unless you're a robot. Now, let me show you first Thessalonians five from verse two, it says for you yourselves know perfectly that the day of the Lord so cometh as a thief in the night. So Paul is telling us this day, the day 
you know, the day of the Lord is the day of the wrath of God. When God will be bringing wrath to the world, will come as a thief in the night. People will not understand. It will come, poop, and then they are. But see what he's saying in verse 9. You can go and read the whole chapter, but let me read for you verse 9. It says, for God has not appointed us to wrath but to obtain salvation by our Lord Jesus Christ. You are not appointed to wrath. You're not appointed to face all these trials and tribulations. Remember, you are the bride of Christ. Now, how would a groom just know that I'm about to marry a certain uh, lady? And then he says first, no, let this other guy first molest my bride. And then I will pick her late after seven years after she's already molested and everything is done to her. Do you think uh, the groom is going to do that? No, you're the bride of Christ. He has to protect you and pick you up from this. Okay. He has already given us a promise that we are not appointed to wrath. So whenever somebody tells you, you'll have to go through the tribulation, tell them, no, 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 brother, no, sister, I'm not appointed to wrath. Okay. So that's very important to understand. That's really, really, important to understand and of course that time of the tribulation this will be the wrath of god happening okay let's go to the book of uh, revelation revelation uh, 14 9 it tells us that this will be the time of the wrath of god it will be so bad the wrath of god um uh, where is it revelation 14 9 to 10 it says and the third angel followed them, saying with a loud voice, If any man worship the beast and his image and receive his mark upon his forehead or in his hand, the same shall drink of the wine of the wrath of God. You see, it is the wrath of God, uh -huh, which is poured out with a mixture into the cup of his indignation, and he shall be tormented with fire and brimstone in the presence of the holy angels and the presence of the Lamb. You see, this is a time of the wrath of God. It will be so bad that God will be judging the earth. Now, do you think God is going to be judging his righteous people? The people who already received him, we already have a, an agreement out of court. We already received Jesus Christ uh, through believing in his blood. We already have, have been separated from this. So he's going to pick us up and, pre, and uh, keep us um, you know, safe before that day. And also we can confirm this one in Matthew 24, 29. Let's go there, Matthew 24, 29 to 30. It says, Immediately after the tribulation of those days shall the sun be darkened and the moon shall not give a light and the stars shall fall from heaven and the powers of heaven shall be shaken and then shall appear the sign of the son of man in heaven and then shall all the tribes of the earth mourn and they shall see the son of man coming in the clouds of heaven with power and great glory. So remember, when you see this sign of the son of man coming, we are coming with Jesus Christ. So it means we already left before that. Okay. So Jesus will not be coming alone. He'll be coming with these saints. Okay. So if you're still there and thinking, I'll go through the tribulation and you're a Christian. No, don't worry. Relax. You know, Jesus has got your plan ready. You know, there's an escape plan. But of course, to those who will be left here, it will be so difficult for them. Now, the time of tribulation has several names that it has been given. You know, there are a couple of names that uh, we, we uh, are used in the Bible to, to mean uh, tribulation. Uh, number one, we hear the time of tribulation called the Daniel 70th week. Okay, you have had the time, uh, you have had people talking about the Daniel 70th week. Now, let's see, why is it called the Daniel 70th week? Now, let's go to the book of Daniel and see why is the time of tribulation called Dan Daniel 70th week. And we'll go to uh, Daniel 9 verses 24. Daniel 9, 24, it says, 70 weeks are determined upon thy people and upon thy holy city to finish the transgression and to make an end of sin, sins and to make a reconciliation for iniquity and to bring in an everlasting righteousness and to seal up the vision and prophecy and to anoint the most holy. You see, seven things which have already been spoken about here, which have to happen within uh, 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 in a period of 70 weeks, okay? Uh, and uh, like I told you, these 70 weeks are basically... Um, the time frame from uh, okay let me not uh, go ahead of myself so let's let me first um, um talk about the 70 weeks so we have 70 weeks 70 weeks which are determined on thy people so these 70 weeks are already the appointed times okay now 
But then when we look at um, verse 25, it tells us something else. Know therefore and understand that uh, from the going forth of the commandment to restore, you see, from the time of the commandment to restore and build Jerusalem unto the Messiah, the prince, shall be seven weeks and three score and two weeks, that is 69. And the street shall be built again and the wall and even in troublous times, okay? So now meaning up to the time, these 70 weeks, we already have 70 weeks, but by the time that we have the, 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 the temple set up, you know, for worship, the temple being built, it will be exactly 69. So it means there's one week which is missing here, okay? There's one Daniel's week, which is the 70th week, which is, which is missing. So from uh, the, 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 uh, that time which is mentioned until 69 weeks, then that 69 week is when now we'll have the temple set up, okay? The temple in Jerusalem will be set up. Then there'll be one more week which is missing here, okay? Now let's see. Verse 26, where is the one week? This one week is explained in verse 27. He shall confirm the covenant with many for one week. Have you seen that? So this one last week is the week when now, after the temple have been set up, and then all the way to the time when the Messiah comes back, it will be exactly one week, seven years. And of course, we see at the middle, you know, the Antichrist will, uh, will declare himself that he's going to be worshipped and he'll start persecuting people. And so we see the first three and a half years will be really, really, okay, okay, it will not really be that good. Eh? It will be a time of some somehow peace, but of course, it's not too much peace because there will also be other things which are happening, uh, small, small judgments that God will be doing to the people. And then after that, we'll have the great tribulation. So we see the Daniel 70th week is the last final seven years before the Messiah comes back. So I hope that one uh, we're in agreement and you've been able to understand. So um, the time, uh, uh, the time of, it's also called the time of Jacob's trouble, okay? The Bible also calls the time of tribulation as the time of Jacob's trouble. Now we may ask ourselves, why is it the Bible saying that this is the time of Jacob's trouble? It is because this time is not appointed for Christians. We are not appointed to wrath. This is a time that is appointed for Jacob. You know, Jacob is Israel. Israel, it is their time that God is going to be dealing with the nation of Israel. And even these other people will be uh, being told by Jesus not to take the mark of the beast and all that. Those are what we call just gleanings. The whole rapture, the whole harvest has already happened. This is just gleanings. A few people here and of course they will save themselves by having their heads cut off, you know? You have your head cut off, you're the tribulation saying. But remember the Jews have already been told where to go and hide themselves in the mountains and actually is a literal place right now. It's called the, the old city of Petra. That's exactly where they're supposed to go and hide themselves. It's already set. It's a whole city which can feel, I think, almost uh, three to 500,000 people living comfortably there. God is going to provide for them food, water, and everything. It's a place where you cannot bomb. You cannot just enter like that. It's, it's a city built on a rock. It's just so... Uh, just go take your time going to uh, Google the old city of Petra. It's in uh, Jordan, okay? Just go and see. That's exactly where they will be. So they have instructions to be there. So God is going to be dealing with Jacob, with them. Because when the armies will surround that place and now they want to invade them and kill the remaining Jews because the Antichrist will have already killed the Jews in Jerusalem and in Israel, the country. Now he'll be running to the ones hiding themselves in the mountain. And just when he surrounds them and now he wants to kill them, the son of God will come and will fight against the, 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 the Antichrist and finish him up. And that time they will remember him whom they pierced and they will all say in one unison that we believe in Jesus. Jesus is our true Messiah. And as the book of Romans eleven twenty five 25 says that all Israel will be saved. That day they will be all be saved. Have you seen... Um, uh, the, uh, what the Bible is saying. So all Israel will be saved. So this is called the time of Jacob's trouble. It's not your time as a Christian, okay? Let's see, where, where does it call this, the time of Jacob's trouble? Now, the book of Jeremiah 30, it tells us about this. The book of Jeremiah 30, verse 7, it says, uh, 30, verse 7, Alas, for that day is great, so that none is like it, even 
It is even the time of Jacob's trouble, but he shall be saved out of it. You see what I've just told you? It's called the time of Jacob's trouble. So if you're waiting to be in the tribulation, this is not your time. You're not appointed to wrath. You're just waiting and sitting there, waiting to get into wrath for what reason? And you already have the gospel. You can be saved right now and escape this wrath which is about to come because it will be really, really troubling, okay? And also we... Um, if we check on Matthew 24, also it explains and it even stamps the same that that time is for the Jews. You remember the sermon on the mountain, the one uh, which we, we are reading here in Matthew 24, the sermon on the mount. It is basically Jesus telling the Jews about his return, his second coming. This is not talking about the rapture. You see, people are thinking that Matthew 24 talks about rapture. No, it's talking about his second coming, okay? And he's giving instruction to the nation of Israel. These are not your instructions, okay? But of course, he's telling how the end times will be. It also applies to you in some ways or another to show you how the end times will be. But this me message majorly is spoken to the children of Israel. And that's why they are being told in Matthew 24, 16, they are told, then let them which be in Judea flee to the mountain. When you see the abomination, flee to the mountain from Judea. Do you live in Judea? Do you live near Judea? So if you're in Russia, you're in US, you're in Kenya, you're in uh, Tanzania or another place, how can you say now I have to take a flight and go all the way to Judea to hide my uh, to, to the mountains uh, from Judea to the mountains? It's not possible. This message is to the Jews. And that one already explains it is a time of Jacob's trouble. Okay, so prepare yourself and be out of here before that time, you know. And also it's called the time of the end. You know, it is the time of the end. This time is the time of the end. Matthew 24 verse three, it says, and as he sat upon the mountain of olives, the disciples came unto him privately to say, tell us when shall these things be? And what shall be the sign of thy coming and of the time of the end of the world? You see, it is also called the time of the end. So it's, it's an end time, you know? And also we can see from verse 13, verse 13, it says, but he that shall endure unto the end, the same shall be saved. Are you seeing it's the time of the end? And this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world for a witness unto all nations. And then the end will come. You see? So it's the time of the end, this time of the tribulation. So it's not before the end. Now, it's also called the beginning of sorrows. It's a time of the beginning of sorrows. And of course, that one is in Matthew uh, 24, 8. It says, all these are the beginning of sorrows. You see? It is the time of the beginning of sorrows. The time of the end or the time of the beginning of trouble, uh, sorrows. Also, it's also called the time of the great tribulation. Verse 21, it says, for then shall be a great tribulation that was not since the beginning of the world to this time, nor shall it ever be. You see, it is a time also of great tribulation. And finally, it's also called the time of the wrath. Okay, we can see this in Zephaniah, the book of Zephaniah, we can see this. Uh, Zephaniah 1 8, it says about this. It says, and it shall come to pass in the day of the Lord's sacrifice, you know, the Lord's sacrifice, that I will punish the princes and the king's key children and all such that are clothed with strange apparel. Am I in the right place? Zephaniah 1 18. Sorry, I'm reading a different place. Neither their silver nor their gold shall be able to deliver them in the day of the Lord's wrath. You see? It is the day of the Lord's wrath. No one will be able to deliver them that day, the day of the Lord's wrath, okay? But the whole land shall be devoured by the fire of his jealousy, for he shall make even the speedy riddance of all them that dwell in the land. You see what will be happening that time? A speedy riddance. It, you'll be ridden in a, <laughs> a very speedy way and things will be tossed so tough on you. It's like you're running, but you don't know where you're running. It will be so difficult for people in the time of the wrath. Of course, uh, you can go to Revelation 16, 1. Uh, Revelation 16, 1. I'm reading very quickly because uh, this is a huge, long message and I don't want it to be so long. Revelation 16, 1, it says, and I heard a great voice out of the temple saying unto the seven angels, go your ways and pour out the vials of the wrath of God upon the earth. You see, it is a time of wrath, time of wrath, time of wrath. Now, let me break down now the tribulation, okay? 
let me break it down so that you can understand that what will be the events, what will be happening, okay, during that time. Now, first and foremost, to begin the tribulation, there'll be a covenant which will be made. Now, this covenant is the one which will show exactly these are the seven years of tribulation. And this is the covenant which will be uh, empowered or strengthened, okay? The one I've told you, uh, the covenant which will be strengthened by the Antichrist. And the moment you see him, he has said, now we have seven years of peace. It is signed, seven years of peace in Jerusalem, uh, in is Israel, it's written like that. And there's a guy who has said, now from today, we have made agreement and they greet each other and they say, seven years of peace, my friend, you have started the tribulation. That is the time. That is the time. Exactly. When they say that, that is the time. Let me show you. Daniel 9, 27. We are already there. And we will see We will see exactly what he'll be speaking about. Of course, I've, I've, I've read that, but I want to insist it a little bit here. He says, and he shall confirm the covenant with many for one week. The Antichrist, when he shows up for one week, and we have seen a week is seven years, okay? And uh, in the midst of the week, shall he cause the sacrifice and the oblation to cease, okay? So he will, seven years, and at the middle, he will change. He will say, no, worship me. Stop worshiping God. Stop those sacrifices and ordinances to God. I am here now, worship me. And then now we'll usher in the other half of the, of the tribulation. So it will be three and a half, then abomination of desolation, and then three and a half years of great tribulation, okay? So it will be, like that. So the persecution will be on the latter half. That's why it's called the great tribulation and then tribulation time. Now, let me tell you about the progress of the tribulation, how it will be. How will it progress? First and foremost, we will see the beginning of sorrows will be in the first part of the tribulation will be the beginning of sorrows. Let's see Matthew 24. Back again, uh, like I told you, Matthew 24 has a lot to talk about this time, okay? Matthew 24, 7 to 8, it says, all these are be the beginning of sorrows, okay? Then they shall deliver you unto be afflicted and, uh, and kill. So basically, he's saying, actually, you should read from verse 7. He says, for nations shall rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom. There shall be famines and pestilences and earthquakes in diverse places. All these are the beginning of sorrow. So the first part is the beginning of sorrows. When we have famines, pestilences, these are basically the four horsemen of the apocalypse in the first, uh, the first session of the, the first half of the tribulation, okay, before we come to the second half. So the first half is the four horsemen of the tribulation, okay, the four horsemen of apocalypse. That's what, what, what is usually being said. So we already see that. That's the beginning of sorrows. And after that, the second part is when now we'll have the great tribulation, the second part of the time of persecution. And the Bible is where it says, then, you see, after the sorrows, then, verse 9, Matthew 24, 9, it says, then shall they deliver you to be afflicted and shall kill you and shall be hated of all nations for my name's sake. So that time the persecution has started. That's why he's saying, and then after this, and then persecution will start. And of course, we see verse 10 is also talking about the same thing. It's saying, and then many shall be offended. Then it means after this part, and then many shall be offended and many shall betray one another and shall be uh, hate one another. And of course, you see verse 16 talking about the same thing. And, the, and let them which be in Judea flee to the mountains. So already we know the time they are fleeing to the mountain is after the abomination of desolation has happened in the, after the final uh, part of the first half, which is the tribulation. Now, when it happens, and then now who is in Judea flee to the mountains, you know, now we have officially started the second part of the tri uh, great tribulation, okay? And uh, verse 21, it tells us, for then shall be great tribulation. You see, for then, that time, for then there'll be a great tribulation and so forth. And uh, uh, of course, you have been able to know why, because of uh, he will declare himself to be worshipped and all those kind of things. Then number, the other point is the woman. You see, there's a point in the Bible which talks about the woman, okay? Now, this woman is Israel. This is a sign which was seen uh, 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 people are always talking about a sign which was seen on 23rd of September 2017, uh, 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 a prophecy which was fulfilled. 
showing that uh, we are towards the same time of the end. So I may not be dogmatic about this. I may not say so much about this, but when you talk about the woman in the book of Revelation, this woman is Israel, okay? Let's go there. Revelation 12 from verse one, it says one to two. And there appeared a great wonder in heaven, a woman clothed with the sun and the moon under her feet and upon her head, a crown of 12 stars. And she being with child cried, traveling in birth, pains to be delivered. You see this woman, we, we are seeing signs here, a woman clothed with the sun and the moon under her feet and upon her head, a crown of 12 stars. So this is already spoken. It was spoken by, uh, in the book of Genesis. Now let's go to Genesis 37. You'll be able to see this woman, the same, same characteristics are for Israel, okay? The nation of Israel. This woman is Israel. Genesis 37 from verse nine to 10, it says, and, and he dreamed, this is talking about Joseph, Joseph and his brothers. And he dreamed yet another dream and told his brethren and said, behold, I've dreamed, uh, I've dreamed a dream more. And and behold, the sun and the moon and the 11 stars made obedience unto me. You see why he's saying of 11 stars? Because is the 12th star. You see, it was uh, Joseph and his, his brothers. So there were 12 of them. You see, it's talking about the 12 tribes of Israel. And even to uh, uh, put a nail on the coffin concerning the same, we see verse 10, it says, and he told it to his father and to, to his brethren, and his father rebuked him, saying unto him, what is this dream that you has dreamed? And uh, um, shall I and thy mother, you see the father is a representation of the sun, and the mother representation of the moon, Will I and your mother and thy brethren indeed come to bow down ourselves to thee, uh, to the earth? You see, it's talking about Israel. So that woman is Israel, and she will be running to the wilderness to go and hide ourselves there because it will be so so bad. So let's see where for how long will Israel hide herself? You see, the Bible says when you see the abomination of desolation stand in the uh, uh, place where it's not supposed to be, run to the mountains. So when you see this happen, then start running to the mountains, okay? After the abomination of desolation in the latter half. So for how long will they be here? This one will also confirm to us that is exactly three and a half years also, okay? They'll hide themselves for three and a half years. It said in uh, Revelation 12, verse 6, it says, Revelation 12, 6, it says, and the woman, you see, is talking about the woman Israel, and the woman fled into the wilderness where she has a place prepared of God that she, they should feed her for a thousand two hundred and three score days. That's exactly 1260 days, meaning that the three and a half years, okay? When you count the days, those are three and a half years because according to God, the calendar uh, God's calendar is 360 days for a year, okay? And of course, I'll tell you um, as, as I continue here, I have a teaching about the same as I continue. So they'll be running away from whom? This nation of Israel, who will they be running away from? It is basically this, the Antichrist, of course, Satan, they'll be running away from him. Let's see, Revelation 12, 14, it says, and to the woman who are given two wings of a great eagle so that she might fly into the wilderness into a place where she is nourished for a time and times and half a time from the face of the serpent. You see, it is Satan who will be wanting to kill, to kill the nation, everybody of the nation of Israel, okay? For a time, time and a half a time, three and a half years. Again, we have been able to understand that. And also, uh, of course, we see that one well explained back again in Daniel 9, 27. You can also go and check again. And also Matthew 24, 15, 16, and also verse 21. You can also check that one uh, well explained. Now, let's see the persecution of the beast. That's another thing. Now, who will the beast be persecuting? the persecutions of the beast will start. Now let's check that concerning uh, the time of tribulation. How will he persecute people and what will really happen in those persecutions? In Revelation 13, 4, Revelation 13, 4, he will force everybody to worship him. You know, this beast will be so evil and he will force everyone to worship him. Now let's see uh, verse 4. 
and they worship the dragon, which gave power unto the beasts. And they worship the beast, saying, who is like unto the beast? Who is able to make war with him? You see, he will be forcing everybody to worship him, that beast. And let's see verse 7. And it was given unto him to make war with the saints. You see, he will persecute the saints. He will persecute the saints and to overcome them. So if you're thinking that you're a saint and you're, uh, me, me, I think I'll fight the Antichrist, will come with some bombs as Christians, we fight him. No, the Bible says he will overcome you because that time will be given the power to overcome the saints, okay? And the power was given to him to uh, over all kindreds and tongues and nations. So God will have allowed this to happen for a certain reason, okay? So that he, he can be able to judge the world, the unbelieving world, which did not want to listen, okay? And also we see verse 17 of Revelation 13, 17, it says, and that no man might buy or sell, save he that has the mark or the name of the beast or the number of his name. Unless you have the number of his name, the name of the beast and uh, or what? Mark, name, or the number, you will not be able to buy or say. You see, that's persecution. He will persecute everyone. Don't think now persecution has started. We are just, we're just in the first, first, first times. Eh? We're just seeing, you know, this is just a trailer of what is going to happen. It's going to be so worse. So you rather just get saved and uh, move out at the time before the wrath comes, okay? And also we see the Antichrist, he will start persecuting and also he will continue you see, when I tell you, you continue with what you are doing, it means you are doing something in the first half. And in the second half, you also continue. Verse 5, it says, And there was given him unto him a mouth speaking great things and blasphemies. And power was given unto him to continue. Okay, to continue for how long? 42 months. You see, it's continuing 42 months, meaning three and a half years. So that one also confirming it is basically three and a half and then three and a half, okay? It's continuing, okay? The second part of the tribulation. Also, again, the Antichrist will make war with the saints, like I've read to you in verse seven. And also you can go to the uh, a check. Also, he will give a mark to everyone, like I've read to you in verse 17, now, let's talk about the two witnesses. You have heard about that there will be two witnesses who will be here on earth during that time. Now, let's talk about them. What will be of these two witnesses and when will they appear? Will they appear at the beginning, at the middle, or at the end? And, and for how long? So the two witnesses will appear uh, during the second half of the tribulation. Exactly. Now, let's see. Revelation 11, 11 13. Uh, 11 verse 3 it says and i will give power unto my two witnesses and they shall prophesy a thousand and two hundred and three score days clothed in sack cloth okay so they'll prophesy for how long one one thousand two hundred and sixty days that's basically two uh, three and a half years okay now a uh, one biblical month is basically 30 days. And this one we can see it in Genesis 7 verse 11, when we see that the flood started on the se second month of the um, second month of the 17th day, okay, at the floods. I'm just telling you so that you can be able to understand. And also Genesis 8, 3 to 4, it says 150 days later, the water stopped, you know, the water stopped, the, the one which was um, uh, in the Noah's time, eh? it stopped. And uh, the ark rested in the seventh month and 17th day. So which was exactly 150 days. And when you divide 150 days, divide by five, it basically gives you 30 days. So meaning one biblical month is exactly 30 days. You can go and do your research on that. I don't want to dwell on that, okay? Uh, the two witnesses, their ministry, okay? What will happen about them? What? How will they be And the... Uh, uh, when will they start and when will they be killed? We have seen when they will start. So let's see. When will they be killed? When will they be killed? We have seen they will start immediately at the, at the beginning of the second half of tribulation, the great tribulation. That's when they will start. So when will they be killed and what will happen after that? Now, the Bible tells us what will happen in Revelation uh, chapter 11, verse 7. Verse 7, it tells us, and when they shall have finished their testimony, the beast that ascends out of the bottomless pit shall make war against them and shall overcome them and kill them. 
after they have finished their ministry, they will be killed by the beasts. And then after they are killed, what's next? Let's see. In the verse, uh, verse what? That was verse 7. Verse 11 to 12, it says what will happen to them. Verse 11 to 12, it says, and after three days and a half, you know, after three and a half years, three days and a half, Remember, it is one week that you're talking about. After three days and a half, meaning after the three and a half years, that is the time that they'll be killed. And after that, okay, see, after that, what will happen? Verse um, uh, 11, and after three days and a half, the spirit of life from God entered into them and they stood upon their feet and great fear fell upon them which saw them. You see, people will be watching and they, you know, they'll refuse to bury them and they'll be there on the streets and people are taking selfies and they'll say, hey, hey, the two witnesses who have always been bringing fire and farmer into us, these guys now they have died. Eh? They thought they are bigger than the Antichrist. They have died. Now, the moment they're just saying that, the spirit of God will enter into them and then they will rise up. And let's see what will happen. Verse 12. And they heard a great voice from heaven saying, unto them, come up hither, and they ascended up to heaven in a cloud, and their enemies beheld them. You see, they see, and they see the Spirit of God has come, they have woken up, and then they hear a voice, come up hither, and then they start moving up. Let me tell you, people will believe in that time, yeah? <laughs> Let me just read for you verse 13. I didn't want to read this, but just listen. And the same hour, when they have just left, the same hour, there was a great earthquake and the 10th part of the city fell and in the earthquake were slain of men, 7,000 men. And the rem remnant were frightened and gave glory to the God of heaven. You see, 7,000 people will die that day, okay? And then we see verse 15, and the seven angels uh, sounded and there were great voices in heaven saying, the kingdoms of this world have become the kingdoms of our Lord and of Christ and shall reign forever and ever. So after they are finished, their ministry, then now the end will be beginning, okay? Now the final battle will just be about to start, okay? Now let's continue. Now let's see. The seals of revelation will be loosed when? In the first half of the tribulation, we'll see the seals, the seals being loosed. This is the time when the Antichrist is starting to get power, okay? In the first half of the tribulation, okay? Now let's see about these seals. This is what we call the beginning of sorrows. As we have read in Matthew 24 from verse 5 to 8, you can go back and see. This is the beginning of sorrows, okay? Now, Revelation 6 from verse 1, it tells us about this. It tells us about these seals, how they'll be opened and what really will happen. Now, Revelation 6, 1, it says, And I saw when the lamp opened one of the seals, and I heard as it were the noise of thunder, and one of the four be saying, Come and see. And I saw and behold a white horse, you see, why is it a white horse? Because the Antichrist will be pretending to be coming like Jesus in a white attire, white horse, you know? He'll be pretending. No, let's see. A white horse and he that sat on him had a bow, you know, he had a bow. Uh -huh. He was shooting something. Does this sound familiar to the time that we are living in? He's about to start shooting things into people, <laughs> okay? He's shooting things into people. And a crown was given unto him. Can you go and translate the, the, uh, this C thing that uh, we are talking about right now in the world? Eh? The main word, eh? the, the C, V, you know, exactly that word, that C. I don't want to mention it because I, I don't want to be blocked here on, uh, online. That C word, when you translate it from Spanish, it basically means a crown. Does that uh, make some sense to you? Do you see probably the Antichrist may st uh, be starting to conquer and conquer? <laughs> so <laughs> open up your eyes and just say, yeah, if you're there mm -hmm, and you're running after the things of the Antichrist, open up your eyes, my friends. And a crown was given unto him and he went forth, he went forth conquering and to conquer. He started conquering this nation, that nation. Do this, you know, lock there, lock there. This is my territory. No, you cannot do this unless we do this. Hey, Tanzania, you, you people, you're not doing this. He's starting to conquer. I'm not saying we're in the time of tribulation, but this one seems to be a precursor, okay? And then after he starts to conquer, what will happen? The second thing is 
the second seal will be opened, okay? In verse three, we see, and when he had opened the second seal, I heard the second beast say, come and see. And there went out another horse that was red, you see? The first horse is white of the Antichrist. The second horse is red, meaning what? The power was given to him that sat thereon to take peace from the earth. So there will be no peace. Probably the third world war will start, okay? Very, very soon. Uh, and there should uh, and they should kill one another and there was given unto him a great sword you see people will start killing each other are you hearing of rumors of wars and wars and wars and nation rising against nation are you seeing these kind of things like what i was seeing the other day that they're saying that uh, i don't know is russia and which country they are about to start world war they are saying this is we are heading there you can see how oh, we are so much towards near there and why you need to get saved right now. And then verse, uh, verse five, verse five and verse six, it talks about the third seal. The third seal is of famine. There'll be Antichrist ruling now starting to take over with the white horse. The second one, the red horse, the horse of war. Then after Antichrist, we have war. Then after war, we have famine. Okay, now let's go to famine. Let's see. The third seal, verse five and six, it says, and when he had opened the third seal, I had the third beast say, come and see, I beheld, and lo, a black horse, and he that sat on him had a pair of balances in his hands. You see, pair of balances, to balance what? Let's see, verse six. And I heard a voice in the biddest of the four beasts says, a measure of wheat for a penny? You think now you're facing hunger? You're going to face it even much more. A measure of wheat for a penny? And a three measures of barley for a penny? You'll be working the whole day and just get a, a measure of food. You know, that's exactly how it will be. And see that you had not the oil and the wine. <laughs> Why oil and the wine? These are the chosen people of God. Okay. I don't want to get into this, but there'll be a lot of famine. Okay. There'll be a lot of famine. And then verse eight talks about death and hell. The fourth uh, horse of the apocalypse eh, is a pale one. Okay which represents death and the hell. So people will really die going to hell, dying going to hell, dying going to hell. Let's see verse eight, it says, and I looked and behold a pale horse and his name that sat on him was death, okay? And the hell followed with him and power was given to them over the fourth part of the earth to kill with sword and with hunger and death and with the beast of the earth. So death will be rampant. And this is just the beginning of sorrows. <laughs> you can just imagine, how the second part will be like, this is just the beginning, which I'm talking about this. Eh? Don't think it's the end of the world. It's just the beginning. So you can just imagine how the second part will be. You just better listen to this till the end, okay? Now, we have seen this, the seals of God, eh? the seals of revelation, they have been opened. Now, let's go to the judgments now, okay? Judgments, the second part of tribulation, the the great tribulation, what are these judgments that God is going to judge the world? You see, you always told that God is going to bring judgment unto the world. The first one that you have had is just the seals being opened, you know, just letting loose. Yeah, people, yeah, start, let it start happening. God has said, okay, it's okay. You refused. Uh, you said you don't want to believe in me. No, no, do it yourself. I've opened the seals. Let it happen. Now the judgments of God, they start. Now God himself starts judging now. Now let's see. The first judgment will be the seven trumpets, okay? Seven trumpets will be blown, okay, from God. And every trumpet will represent a certain type of problem, a certain type of judgment which God will be judging. Now, let's see the first trumpet, Revelation chapter 8, verse 7. It talks about the first uh, trumpet which will be uh, uh, blown, the first trumpet. Revelation 8, 7, uh, 8, from verse seven, it says, the first angel sounded and there followed hail and fire mingled with blood and they that and they were cast upon the earth and the third part of the trees were burned up and all green grass was burned up. So now that one will be hail and fire mixed with blood. Hey, my friend, this will really be bad. Now you think that the world is burning right now? You look at... Uh, uh, you look at Australia, you look at Oregon, you look at California fires, those would be nothing compared with what will be coming. It will be burning everywhere. A third of the, a third of the earth will burn up. 
a third of the earth. Now, let's see. The second trumpet will be blown. What will happen? Verse 8 and 9. Verse 8 and 9. It says, And the second angel sounded, and it was a great mountain burning with fire cast into the sea. And a third, a third part of the sea became blood. <laughs> just imagine the sea becoming blood. You're just wondering and saying, what? Look at this. It's blood. It's really, really looking like blood. It's here. And verse 9. <laughs> and third part of the creatures which were in the sea and had life died. And the third part of the ships were destroyed. Just think about it. You're sailing and you're sailing on top of blood. It will be that bad. Don't think this is science fiction. This is true. It's going to happen because the Bible has said it will happen. The sea will turn to blood and a third, a third of every creature in the ocean, in the sea, they will die, a third of them, okay? So just imagine how much smelling and how much looking bad it will be during that time. Now let's see, the third trumpet is blown. What will happen? The third trumpet, let's see, verse 10. And the third angel sounded and there fell a great star from heaven, okay? A great star from heaven, burning as it was a lamb. And it fell upon the third part of the rivers and upon the fountains of the waters. This is what they're always talking about. There's an asteroid coming. There's an asteroid which is about to hit the earth. Now that time it will come in 3D and everybody will see it. It will not just be like a theory, like a story that you always hear. Oh, we had some people saying in China, some people saying in the US, some people saying in, I don't know, Russia, Egypt, that they saw something. No, you will see it. It will come like this and it will get into the waters. And verse 11 says, and the name of the star is called Wormwood. And the third part of the waters became Wardwood, Wormwood. And many men died of the waters because they were made bitter. Now, Wormwood will basically made, make every water that people are drinking bitter. Just imagine you're going to fetch water and it is bitter. You cannot drink it. You cannot, <laughs> it, it will, and it's all the rivers. Look at it. The third part of the rivers. Rivers, you go to this river, you fetch water, it's bitter. Everywhere is bitter. Everywhere is bitter. Just think about that and how, and how troublesome will that be. And then the fourth trumpet will be blown. And this is what hap will happen when the fourth trumpet will be blown. Verse 12, it says, And the fourth angel sounded, and the third part of the sun was smitten, and the third part of the moon, and the third part of the stars, so as the third part of them were darkened, and the day shone not for a third part of it, and the night likewise. There will be darkness. A third part of the earth, there will be darkness. You'll not be able to see. It's being spoken here. Look at it and see how terrible it will be on that time. You'd rather just get saved right now. And then another trumpet, the trumpet number five, will be blown. Now, let's see what will happen. In Revelation 9, uh, from verse 2 to 3, it says... And he opened the bottomless pit, okay? And there arose a smoke out of the pit as the smoke of great furnace. And the sun and the air were darkened by reason of the smoke of the pit, okay? Something has been opened from underground. It looks like a volcano opened up. And there came out of the smoke locusts, you see? It's been opened like a volcano and then locusts come out upon the earth and unto them was given power as the scorpions of the earth have power and it was commanded to them that they should not hurt the grass you see they don't even have a problem with the gra grass of the earth neither any green thing neither any tree but only those men which have not the seal of god in their foreheads to them it was given that they should not kill them but they should torment them five months torment them five months and their torment was the, the torment of a scorpion when he strikes a man just think about how it will be. Here comes some volcano or something. There's a big cloud of smoke and all of a sudden locusts come and they are tormenting people for five months. Five good months. Big, huge locusts. They are tormenting people for five months. Will you be able to survive that time? Just ask yourself. you rather get saved. Now let's see. The sixth trumpet will be blown and this is what will happen. Uh, verse uh, Revelation 9, verse 13. Let me show you what will happen. And the sixth angel sounded, and I heard a voice from the four horns of the golden altar, which is before God, okay? The sixth one has opened. Verse 18. By this, three, uh, three was the third part of men killed, 
by fire and by smoke and by brimstone, which issued out of their mouths. So a third of humanity will be killed, will be slaughtered. A third part of humanity will be slaughtered out. Just look at that. And then the, the final uh, trumpet will, be, will sound, the seventh trumpet. Now let's see what will happen. There'll be, God will send rain. Look at this. <laughs> Revelation 10 from verse 1, it says, And I saw another mighty angel come down from heaven, clothed with a, with a cloud. You see? Another angel clothed with a cloud. He has come, okay? He's clothed with a cloud, and he has come. And now, after he has come, what happens? And a rainbow was upon his head, and his face, face was a, as it were the sun, and his feet as pillars of fire. Let's see verse 3. And he cried with a loud voice, and as when a lion roareth, you know, you see that kind of the way thunder does it. And when he had uh, cried, seven thunders uttered their voices. Man, think about that kind of rain. Seven thunders are uttering their voices. Will you be able to hold? Now, I've shown you about the seven trumpets, which will happen in the time of tribulation. Let's see, judgments are not done. There are again seven vials, seven vials. <laughs> I don't know if people will be able to hold this. Seven vials now, they're about to be poured. And each vial will come with its own judgment. Now let's listen to these vials. What will really happen? The first vial will be poured. Let me show you. Verse uh, Revelation 16, 2. It tells us about when these vials are poured. 16, 2, it says, And the first went and poured out his vial upon the earth. And there fell a noisome and grievous sore upon the men which are the mark of the beast and upon them which worship his image. Now, that time, you think that uh, what you have taken is really healthy for you? There's another one which is coming, which is even deadlier than this, okay? This one you're taking is just an example of the things which are ahead. You'll take this and take this. You see, they are taking, they are saying that you will take it every year. You'll take it every year because, you know, there are different, uh, the, 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 the disease which are talking about is changing every, you know, it's changing. There's a change from, there's a South African ward, there's a UK ward, you know what I mean. There's a Kenyan ward, there's a Tanzanian ward. So they're saying you probably will be taking it every year and probably every month. So there's one which is coming and you'll be given and it will produce grievous sores into you on your body. And you'll be looking at yourself, you look as if, have you ever seen someone who has just been poured on some hot oil? That's exactly how it will be looking like, okay? And that will be God's judgment because you refused and you took the mark of the beast, okay? Now, that is the first vial, which will be like boils. Second vial, we see that there will be blood in the sea. Blood in the sea. <laughs> Let's see verse 3. Revelation 16, 3, it says, Revelation 13, uh, 16, 3, it says, and the second angel poured out his vial upon the sea, and it became as the blood of a dead man, and every living soul died in the sea. Look at that. The sea, water became like blood, the blood of a dead man. Think about it. How will it be? So ter terrible. Okay. Will you be able to survive? Let's see, the third vial is poured again. The third vial is poured. And this third vial will bring in blood in the rivers and fountains. You thought it's only sea? It will now transfer and even now be to the rivers and the fountains. So there is no place where you can get blood, uh, water to drink. You'll be able to drink blood. Think about that. 16.4. 16.4, it says... And the third angel poured out his vial upon the rivers and fountains of water, and they became blood, okay? And I heard the angel of the water say, Thou art righteous, O Lord, which are, and was, and shall be, because you have judged thus, for they have shed the blood of the saints and the prophets, and they have given them blood to drink, for they are worthy. Let them drink that blood, because they refused and they killed the saints of God. They kill the saints of God and the people in the world will be judged by God. They will drink blood like water. That's exactly what will happen. And the fourth vial will be opened. Now, this one will bring scorching heat of the sun. The sun will scorch people in a way that they have never imagined. You're talking about climate change right now. You ain't seen no climate change yet. You will see it now. It will come during that time. If you don't get saved right now, 
you're going to face all these things which are written here. The things that I'm telling you right now, you will face all of this. Now, scorching heat from the sun on the fourth vial, when it will be opened, 16.8, it says, and the fourth angel poured out his vial upon the sun, and power was given unto him to scorch men with fire. And men were scorched with great heat and blasphemed the name of God, which had power over these plagues, and they repented not to give him glory. You see, people will be scorched by the sun. It's so much what is scorching them, and they're getting sunburns everywhere, and they're boiling. But then the worst thing about humanity, they'll not even repent. They'll not even tell God, please, God, we are sorry. Oh, you've put this. They will not even be sorry. They'll just be saying, ah, you see, you, God, you're causing these things. You, they'll be blaspheming and cursing God. But God is saying, it's okay. It's okay. You want it to be like that? It will be even much more. And then the fifth vial will be poured. Okay. And then now there'll be darkness. Let me show you verse 10. It says, and the fifth angel poured out his vial upon the seat of the beast, the seat of the beast, where? Where he'll be ruling here on earth. And his kingdom was full of darkness and they gnawed their tongues for pain. You see, this darkness will be so much that you'll, it will be even painful in that darkness. Okay. And blaspheme the God of heaven because of their pains and their sores and repented not of their deeds. You see, they will refuse to repent and tell God, please take away this darkness. They'll just be saying, you God, you bring this darkness. You brought the sun. Now you bring darkness. They're arguing and, and the blaspheming and cursing God. But then God is saying, okay, you see how man, mankind you are like, you don't want to do what is right. It's okay. Then the sixth vial will be opened. Now, this sixth vial will dry up the river Euphrates, okay? The river Euphrates, this is one river which is really, uh, it, it's a, one of the greatest rivers out there in the Middle East. Why will it be dried? So that now they can prepare that river when, it's, when it gets dry, then now the battle of Armageddon can be prepared. The Bible says that 400 million, million strong men from the east will be coming towards Israel. They'll want now 400 million soldiers. Think about 400 million soldiers coming all those people from there and others are coming from the north and others are coming from the side and are all about to attack Israel. Just think about that. Is this not really prophetic? 400 million from the east. Who is from the east of Israel? China. They'll be coming from China, 400 million. And already as we see, that is possible because we already have, a, a, I don't know, 1.3 billion people in China. So you can, <laughs> 400 million is, is nothing, you know, to them. They will all come and others from Russia and others from where? From the, from the north, that is Russia, from others from Turkey and Syria. And, and they're all about to finish Israel. And that's why the river Euphrates will have to dry up. So that now this battle can be a battle of the year, the battle of the Armageddon. Let me show you the sixth vial, Revelation 16, 12. It says, and the sixth angel poured out his vial upon the great river Euphrates and the water thereof was dried up that the way of the kings of the east be prepared. They are coming from the east. It's okay. You want to do this? God will be like saying, okay, China, you want to finish up with Israel? Because China will be there. 400 million straight. You want to finish up with Israel? Okay, let me dry the sea. It's like God saying, it's okay, it's okay. Let me dry the, 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 the river for you eh, so that you can be able to move comfortably. So that when you are about to strike it, I will come from heaven and I will just speak one word and you are no more. Now, after that, we see the seventh vial being opened. And this seventh vial, my friends, you see the the these guys have just come and they have come and they have come from the north they have come from the east they have come from the west they are now ready to attack israel where they are hiding in the mountains and they are saying now let's finish these jews once and for all the last time these jews we are done with them let's finish them up then now the seventh vial will be opened and the end of the world the end of the world the king jesus will come back as the glorious Messiah, and they will see him, and he will finish them up. Let's see what will happen when the seventh vial is opened. Revelation 16, 17, it says, And the seventh angel poured out his vial into the air, 
And there came a great voice out of the temple of heaven from the throne saying, it is done. It's done. It's done. It's finished. And there were voices and thunders and lightnings. And there was a great earthquake. You see, earthquake will come. And such was not since men were upon the earth. And so mighty an earthquake and so great. The earthquake which will be there when Jesus is coming down, there has never been an earthquake like this. You see, people always hear about there's a 7.1, there's a 8 point something which caused tsunami, there's water. Now, the earthquake which will come when Jesus will be coming back, it will be so much, it has never been felt since the beginning of the world. Think about that kind of earthquake. And the great city was divided into three parts and cities of the nations fell. And the great Babylon came in remembrance before God to give utterance to the cup of wine of the fierceness of his wrath. Jesus will come and he'll finish all these people and the end of the world will be, okay? Now, we have read about the seven vials and how it is and how it will be, okay? Now, let's see another thing concerning the time of tribulation. The satanic treaty, you know, trinity, sorry, the satanic trinity. You see, God has a trinity, God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. And Satan is a master deceiver. He will create his own trinity as well, which is an evil trinity, which is Satan, the the antichrist and the false prophets are you seeing it's creating his own trinity let me tell you about this trinity and what will be their work during that time okay satan let's start with satan okay now satan will uh, will fight there will be a great war up there in the heavens and he will fight that war it will be the last final war in the skies where michael and his angels will fight the devil and his armies and they'll be cast down and Satan will come back down and he will be totally told and now uh, uh, denied access to heaven. You see right now, Satan can still go up and down, up and down. He still has access. Remember the story of Job when uh, the sons of God and Satan was among them and they were hovering around and God asked them, where have you been, Satan? I was just around, you know, roaming around, checking around because it means Satan has still, you know, he goes up and down, he's still around. But now that time, that will be the last final war in the skies. And he will be fought down by Michael and his angels and thrown down. And he will come with a lot of bitterness. Now, let's see. Revelation 12, it talks about this. Revelation 12, it tells us about how Satan will be kicked out. Verse 3. And there appeared another wonder in heaven. And behold, a great red dragon having seven heads and ten horns and seven crowns upon his head. And he, his tail drew a third part of the stars of heaven and did cast them down to the earth. And the dragon stood before the woman, which was ready to be delivered and to devour her as soon as it was born. He has been cast down from heaven with his angels. And now he's running to go and destroy Israel, that woman. I've been cast out. Let me now and destroy Israel. Okay. Of course, he will try to kill Israel. And of course, mankind will even worship Satan. <laughs> if the mankind will try to worship. They will worship, not even try. They will worship Satan. That's how much God wants to show the world that you people, you are just so evil. You are saying, oh, Satan deceived me. I was not sure. No, people will literally worship Satan. Let me talk about the Antichrist. What will it be his work? Okay or he's called the beast, okay? The Bible calls him the beast. Now, the beast will rule over the world, okay? Revelation 13 from verse 2. Revelation 13, 2, it says, uh, the beast which I saw was like unto a leopard, and his, and his feet were as the feet of a bear, and his mouth as the mouth of a lion, and the, and the dragon gave him his power and his seat and great authority. You see, the beast will have the power from Satan. The Antichrist, his power will not be natural. It will be a power directly from Satan, okay? And uh, it says, and I saw one of his heads as it was wounded to death, and his deadly wound was healed. And all the world wandered after the beast, and they worshipped the dragon, which gave power unto the beast. You see, people will worship Satan, who gave power to the beast. And they worship the beast also. You see, they will also worship Satan, and they worship the beast, saying, who is like unto the beast, who is able to make war unto him? And there was given unto him a mouth speaking great things and blasphemies and power was given unto him to continue 42 months. You see, people will worship the Antichrist and they worship the beast. I mean, they, they worship the beast Antichrist and they also worship Satan. 
it'll be so powerful with a lot of, uh, you know, signs and wonders. For those people who are always loving signs, they're loving wonders. There are some people who are always, hey, please, I need to go to this pastor. He has a lot of signs. He has a lot of wonders. He can prophesy to me. You're looking for wonders and signs? You ain't seen <laughs> nothing. When the Antichrist comes, is when you'll see the real wonders. He'll even call fire from heaven. In the sight of men, he'll even do a lot of things that you'll be able to see and say, oh, this one must be from God. And you'll worship him and say, oh, I, I believe in you. I believe in you, Antichrist. But what? It's all vanity, okay? So people will blaspheme God. Uh, verse 6, they'll blaspheme God. And he opened his mouth in blasphemy against God to blaspheme his name and his tabernacle and them that dwell, dwell in heaven. So they'll blaspheme God, him, the Antichrist. He'll blaspheme God and say no and curse him. And of course, he'll give a mark. He'll give a mark to people. That's the work of the Antichrist. The verse 17. Uh, verse 16. He causeth all, both small and great, rich and poor, free and born, to receive a mark in their right hand or in their foreheads, okay? You'll be forced to receive a mark, a mark on your hand. Are you seeing something which is happening in the world today and people are receiving a certain mark? And uh, right now they're saying you cannot travel, you cannot uh, buy from some stores, you cannot sell, you cannot do a couple of things. Are you not seeing the Antichrist in all this picture? Are you still deceived? Are you still there and thinking, oh, I think, no, it's just for me, just so that I can travel, so that I can get back to normal. Are you seeing this? Are you deceived? Are you fooling yourself? <laughs> Keep on being fooled. Verse 17, that no man might buy or sell that saves he that has the mark or the name of the beast or the number of his name. Here is wisdom. Let him that has understanding count the number of the beast for it is the number of a man and his number is 603 score and six, 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 six. Have you seen the registration number, the patent number of this thing that you're being put in? The registration number. Let me shock you. Go and look at the patent number of the C19 that is being put in people right now. His registration number is WO2020060606. Does that not sound familiar? And you're still there saying, please give it to me because I want to travel, because I want to get back to normal. Hmm. The number of the the number of what? The number of the beasts. <laughs> Start putting it in yourself. This is a precursor, my friend. Continue believing in those fellas. Eh? And uh, have you realized something else? How will they be able to know that you have taken the, the V? How will they be able to know? There's something, there's a component in that V called Lucifer race. Lucifer race. <laughs> Ask yourself, Lucifer race is something which will bring in some ink. It's like a, 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 a light, some light, you know, so that you can see it with the um, it's called what? With a, with a mobile device, you know, with an app, you can be able to see and see this person has taken the V. Oh, okay, they are taken. Because of that light, which is in that component called Lucifer Ace, they'll be able to know who has taken it and who has not. Think about that. Does that not sound to be the name of the beasts? <gasps> what did we just read? Verse 17. And that no man might buy or sell, save he that has the mark. Phew. Or the name of the beast, Lucifer, or the number of his name, 0606, the number we've just been told to read it. Keep on taking the mark. It's all up to you. The problem is yours. Continue. Continue. Run. Run and take it more. You will live and know. This is just the, the beginning. And once you take this, they'll control you like a laptop. And you'll be going to the line to pick the second one and the third one. And even the mark of the beast, you'll not even think you'll be there. Give me the mark and you're done and you're doomed okay now the false prophet the third part of the trinity satanic trinity what will he really do okay now the false prophet will be the representative of the beasts okay he'll be a representative it's like the fats you know uh, is on who is pushing him in front he's, he'll be a very mysterious guy the false prophet huh? but he'll be the representative of the beast let's see revelation 11 uh, th 13, Revelation 13, 11, uh, 12, okay, it says, and I beheld another beast coming out of the earth, and he had two horns like a lamb. Why does he have two horns? Because he'll be pretending to be a lamb. He'll be pretending to be so holy the way Jesus came like a lamb. So he'll be a fake. 
and he spake as a dragon. So is a lamb looking so innocent, yet he speaks like a dragon. Are you seeing that? So he's a pretender, he's a master pretender, okay? And he exercises all the power of the first beast, the first beast is who? The Antichrist before him. And causes the earth and them which dwell there to worship the first beast whose deadly wound was healed. Remember, the Antichrist at the middle of the, at the, middle of the first half, you know, of a tribulation, the Antichrist, there's something else which I not told you. He will be, he'll seem to have been assassinated. I think uh, the, he'll, the people will assassinate him or he'll play some trick to show that he has died. And then he'll rise up again three days later. I think they'll just have uh, killed some, let me use this word. I don't want to use this word because I'm online and uh, most of the time they block this kind of words. But let me use this, some AI, you know, AI clone, something like that. And uh, probably he will rise with such kind of a technology or something. I don't know. Or maybe he'll be killed truly. And then, you know, he'll come back incarnated with Saturn incarnated inside him. And now he'll show people magic. So we see the false prophet will be, you know, he'll be pushing, representing the beast, telling people, worship that beast, worship the Antichrist. You see, he's holy, he's holy. Are you seeing most of the time uh, these false prophets and people like uh, there's a guy from uh, a very big church in Rome. They always wear white robes and some, you know, hair, uh, some cup, you know, some hat, which looks like a fish. You, you have seen them. They, they originate from Rome, a big church there. And uh, that guy looks to me as like if he's one of the false prophets. If there's not be another false prophet, it looks like a biggest candidate because he likes to be worshipped so much. People are kissing his hands and, you know, and he loves to be worshipped and, and he's all after this climate change stuff. And he's all after, you know, let's uh, take the V. Let's, you know, he's more of a globalist than a Christian. So he's not even a Christian. So if you're in that church, which centered in Rome, Please start running away. The Bible says, get out of our, my people, so that you may not partake in our wars. <laughs> okay? So the Antichrist, he will do that. And also, do you know the, uh, the, the, the I mean, sorry, the false prophet, he will also do miracles. You think uh, miracles are only done by godly people? The false prophet will do miracles. Let me show you. Verse 13 and verse 14, it says, and he does great wonders. So that he makes fire come down from heaven <coughs> uh, on the earth in the sight of men. He will call fire and then fire will come and people will see, look at this. This guy must be from God because fire has come from heaven. You see, if you love miracles, you'll be among us the first people who are always deceived. The false prophet will do miracles. He'll call fire from heaven in the sight of men. In the sight of men and deceived them that dwelleth on the earth by the means of those miracles which he had power to do in the sight of the beast, saying to them that dwell on the earth that they should make an image to the beast which had wound, uh, uh, wound by a sword and did live. Okay, so the Antichrist probably after he's been killed, he'll come back with a wound, you know, and uh, and uh, it's written, I, I don't want to go back on the traits of the Antichrist because it's speak, spoken even in the Old, Old Testament. But just long story short, he'll have a wound, he'll be cut by uh, some sword or something. So he'll be, have you seen this uh, Pirates of the Caribbean kind of thing? And uh, they, are, they, are, they are putting some, uh, something on, the, on, the, on one eye and they're putting a, a string here to represent something. So that one is exactly how the Antichrist will be when he comes uh, in the second part of tribulation. And I think that's why most of these fellas, have you seen most of these Illuminati and the uh, Freemason, they're always doing one eye, one eye sign, one eye, one eye thing. They already know this thing is coming. They understand very well. And also he'll also uh, have one hand, which is also hard. So probably one hand will be like this and one eye, you know, something like that. So that, that's a story for another day. You'll be able to uh, understand even more. And of course, uh, he will animate the image of the beast. You know, he will make the image of the beast to live. Okay? The image of the beast will have life. You will be able to speak. You know? He'll make the image of the beast. That, that image that he has created to represent the, the Antichrist, to speak, to come to life. I think they'll use some technology or something that the image will start speaking and telling people, Unless you worship me, you're going to die and stuff like that. So he'll empower all that. That's the satanic trinity, which will happen in the 
at the time of tribulation. Now, let's talk about the tribulation saints, the tribulation saints. What will happen to them? Those people who have been left here, but then they have still uh, one part. They say, oh, now I understand what Keith and those conspiracy theorists were saying. It was true. The rapture has happened. We have been left behind. And now we don't know. We love the pleasure more than Jesus Christ. We loved our lives more than Jesus Christ. We did not want to do what is right. We were corrupt in the church. We we're always sleeping when the sermons are going on. We we're always lefting in different places. Now those people will start remembering and saying, oh, I wish I listened to those fellas. They say that narrow is the way that leads to salvation. I followed the wide way. Now I am lost. Now I've been led by the rapture. Now, what am I going to do? This is what is going to happen to the tribulation saints. This is what is going to happen to them. First, they will be beheaded. Okay. That is absolute. All tribulation saints, there is no guarantee that if you will hide yourself in some in some tunnel somewhere or in some bush somewhere and you're beaten by a snake, you're going to heaven. No, there's no guarantee. There's no guarantee if uh, uh, you're hiding somewhere and a rock falls on you and you die, you'll go to heaven. No, there's no guarantee. There's no guarantee if uh, anything happens to you. There's only one guarantee that you'll see heaven. If you'll have willingly say, I will not deny Jesus Christ. And they tell you, you're sure you'll not deny Jesus Christ? Yes, Jesus is God and Jesus is the Messiah to the Jews. And you tell them now, cut off my head. Willingly, you stay like this and are guillotine on your head. Pop, they cut your head. For the testimony of Jesus Christ, that's the only way you'll go heaven as a tribulation saint. But don't think it will be so easy like you just say phew and then you and then you go. No. These people will torture you. They will pluck one you know finger after one finger. They will pluck you. They will crush you. They crush they remove one by one teeth and they remove one eye and another eye. It will be so difficult for you to refuse. And finally they cut off your head. You will be beheaded. The Bible say says that in Revelation 20 verse 4. Let me show you. And I saw thrones and they that sat on them and judgment was given unto them. And I saw the souls of them that were beheaded for the witness of Jesus and for the word of God, which had not worshiped the beast, neither his image, neither had received his mark upon their foreheads or their hands. And they lived and reigned with Christ a thousand years. Do you see any evidence there of someone who uh, was beaten by a snake? Do you see any evidence of someone who died in an earthquake and they went to heaven? No. For the people whose heads were cut off, for the witness of Jesus Christ. And you say, I will not deny Jesus 100%. You torture me, you torture me, and you, you, the Bible says, whosoever will endure to the end, not the end of the world, will endure to the end of his life. <laughs> that time, whosoever will endure to, his, to the end will be saved. You endure, you endure, they kick you, they beat you, they cut you, they do what, and finally they cut your head you endure, you will have eternal life. But don't think it will be so easy like that. It's not a walk in the park, okay? It's not a walk in the park. Revelation 13, 15, it says about these tribulation saints. Let me show you. Revelation 13, 15, it says, and he had the power to give life unto the image of the beast, that the image of the beast should both speak. You remember what I told you uh, concerning the false prophet? He gave the image of the beast life. You know, he animated the image, okay, should both speak and cause that as many as would not worship the image of the beast should be killed. If you'll not worship this image during the time of tribulation, you will be killed, okay? Nothing else about that. So if you're a tribulation saint, you'll be beheaded. Get ready, just start uh, applying some oil here and how it, that guillotine will come on your neck because that's the only way you can be saved, okay? No other guarantee of any other way. But now you still have a guarantee you can be saved right now. Why wait all these troubles, okay? Now, another thing in to the tribulation saints, salvation will be by faith plus works. Right now you're saved by faith only. Ephesians 2, 8, 9. For by grace are you saved through faith. It is a gift of God, you know, it's not of yourself, it's a gift of God, not of works, lest anyone should boast. It is a gift, it is by faith only that you're saved right now. But that time you'll be saved by faith plus works, okay, faith plus works. You'll have to do some works, some commandments, you fulfill them, and you have faith in Jesus Christ. Don't deny Jesus Christ. Let me show you, Revelation 14 verse 12, it says, here is the patience of the saints. 
Here are they that keep the commandments of God and the faith of Jesus. You keep the commandments and the faith, faith and the works, okay? So that's how you'll be able to be saved. And also another thing, the tribulation saints will have their own rapture later on. There'll be another rapture during that time, which will be the rapture of the tribulation saints. Now you may ask, which one is that? Let me show you. In Matthew 24, let me show you what will be happening on that time. There'll be another rapture for the tribulation saints. Matthew 24, 29 to 31, 29 to 31, where is it? Immediately after the tribulation, you see, he's talking about the tribulation. Immediately after the tribulation of those days, shall the sun be darkened and the moon shall not give a light. And the stars shall fall from heaven, and the power of the heaven shall be shaken. And then shall appear the sign of the Son of Man in heaven. And then shall all the tribes of the earth mourn. And they shall see the Son of Man coming in the clouds of heaven with the power and great glory. And he shall send his angels, listen, he shall send his angels with the great sound of a trumpet, okay? And they shall gather together his elect from the four winds from one end of heaven to the other. So there'll be a mini rapture at the end. When Jesus comes, he'll send his angels to all corners of the earth and collect all the people to where Jesus is, okay? That will be a type of rapture at that time. But for the tribulation saints during that time, uh, of course, we can see in verse 39 to 41, it says 39 to 41, and knew not until the flood came and took them all away. So shall also the coming of the son of man be. Then shall two be in the field and one shall be taken and another left. You see, someone will be taken. That time people will be picked up from all corners of those are tribulation saints, but it will be so tough. Don't, don't wait for that. What we call another rapture on top. You know, it will be so, 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 so tough. Now, Let's ask ourselves, what is the purpose of tribulation anyway? If it's a lot of trouble like this, what's the purpose of tribulation? Why does God have to create the time of tribulation? What's the purpose, you know? Now, the purpose of the time of tribulation is this. God will want to judge the world. This unbelieving world will want to be judged by God. God will be wanting, I want to judge this unbelieving world. It has always been against me. I want to judge it, okay? That will be the reason of him bringing the tribulation. Think about it. If the rapture happens and that's the end of the world and people now are going to judgment, no, God wants to judge first and show people, hey, you people, you have done all these things. I want to judge you. Now look at the, this, Revelation 15.1. Revelation 15.1, it says about this judgment, 15.1, it says, mm, and I saw another sign in heaven, great and marvelous, seven angels having the seven last plagues, for them is filled with the wrath of God, okay, the wrath of God, so God is judging this world, okay, he's judging them, and I don't want to continue so much, but uh, you see wrath, wrath means God is bringing a wrath to judge, judge the world, Revelation 16.1, it says, and I heard a great voice out of the temple saying to the seven angels, go your way and pour the vials of the wrath of God upon the earth. So God is judging the world with this wrath, you know. Revelation 19, 15. It also talks about the same thing, 19, 15. And out of his mouth goes a sharp sword that with heat he should smite the nations and, shall, and he shall rule them with a rod of iron and he shall tread the winepress of the fierceness of the wrath of the almighty God. So God will be judging this fallen world. That's why he'll be bringing the tribulation. And also another reason why God will be bringing another purpose of the tribulation is so that God can reveal the character of Satan, the character of Satan. What is the character of Satan? He wants to show people, you've been believing this guy but he's been up to no good. You've been believing to someone who did not even love you in the first place. So God will want to reveal the character of Satan. Let's see, Revelation 12, 7. Revelation 12, 7 uh, to 12, he says, it says, and there was war in heaven. Michael and his angels fought against the dragon and the dragon fought against his angels and prevailed not, yet there was a place found, any, no more place found for them in heaven. And the great dragon was cast out, that old serpent called the devil and Satan, which deceives the whole world, you see? Satan is a deceiver. He was cast out into the earth and the angels, his angels were cast out with him. Those are demons, okay? 
they are cast out with him. And I heard a loud voice saying in heaven, now is come salvation and strength and the kingdom of our God and the power of his Christ for the accuser of brethren is cast down which accuses them before our Lord day and night. So Satan is a deceiver. He also accuses us every day. He's always say, saying to God, you see this person, what he did yesterday, he should be going to hell. He does not love, he's an accuser, accusing us all the time. And verse 11, and they overcame him by the blood of the lamb and by the word of their testimony, and they loved not their lives unto death, okay? So Satan, his character will be revealed, the character of a being a deceiver and an accuser, and he has nothing but to kill, steal, and destroy, and yet people have been following in him, okay? Another thing, reason why God will bring in the time of tribulation is to prove how sinful man's imagination can be how sinful the imagination of man can be. Now, people will literally worship Satan himself. God created man. He did everything for man. And yet that time, people will literally worship Satan. <laughs> okay, they worship Satan himself. We saw that in Revelation 16, 8. Let me show you. Revelation 16, 8 to 9. It says, and the fourth angel poured out his vial upon the sun, and the power was given unto him to scorch men with fire. And men were scorched with great heat and blasphemed the name of God, which is power over all these plagues. And they repented not to give him glory. Instead of giving glory to God, people will worship Satan. And they'll say, no, no, we don't want this God who is doing these things to us. Okay, and uh, verse 10 to 11 is also talk about the same, uh, and also verse 21, okay? and so forth. So it's basically to show how evil man's imagination can be. Men can be so evil. Sometimes men can do things in an evil way. And God will want to show this is how if men, you people, you are left to do things on your own, this is how evil you can be. Another reason uh, as we wind up will be to, why, uh, to humble the nation of Israel. Now the nation of Israel has always, uh, over the time in memorial, they have always been up and down. Today they are God, they're with God. Tomorrow they worship idols. Today they are with God. Tomorrow they worship idols. And actually for a very long time, they have been worshiping idols. They have not believed in the God of who created them. So God will want to humble the nation of Israel also. That's why it's also called the time of Jacob's trouble, to give them some trouble until they realize, why are we doing this? God loved us. And why did we deny him? Okay, so the Bible says in the book of Jeremiah 37, the book of Jeremiah 30 verse 7, it tells us about this, how God, how God will be humbling the Jews and they'll be crying and calling to him. You know, you can't cry when you're in good time. You, you cry when you're in pain. Jeremiah 37 to 9, it says, mm, oh, I mean, Isaiah, Jeremiah 30, Jeremiah 30, at seven to nine, it says something here. Thirty-seven to nine, it says, "Alas, for that uh, day is great, so that none is like it. Even it is the time of Jacob's trouble, but he shall be saved for, from out of it. For it shall come to pass in that day, says the Lord of hosts, that I will break his yoke from off thy neck, and I will burst thy bones, and uh, strangers shall no more serve themselves of him." Okay shall no more serve themselves of him, but they shall serve the Lord their God and David their king, whom I will raise up unto them, okay? So God will humble them and they will finally serve him and say, we are done of serving the world and serving Satan, we are done. Please, Jesus, help us out because these people are about to finish us up, okay? You see? So God will humble the nation of Israel. They will cry and call upon God and tell him, please save us. And finally, the reason why God will bring the time of tribulation is to get the people saved. Now think about it. If, if just like what I've said, if uh, the rapture just happens and then that's it, and then it's judgment, God will be like, I, God still loves you so much and he still wants you to get saved. And he knows during the time of tribulation when all these judgments are coming, some people will be able to say, I, I, I think I'd rather die and give my life for Christ than go to eternal hellfire. Because the Bible says one thing, God does not rejoice in the death of a sinner. He wants you saved. That's why he is bringing the time of tribulation, at least to give you one last chance so that you can at least be saved. 
even if it will be painful and uh, very uh, hard to be saved, but at least he'll give another final chance for all humanity, even those who have refused him and they have said, there's no God, I'm an atheist, I'm this and that, I don't believe in God, I believe in science, I believe in that, that time you'll know that there is a God and God wants you to get saved. That's why he'll do this so that at least people can be saved. Let's see Revelation 6, 9. Revelation 6, 9. Okay, 6, 9 to 11. It says, mm, and when he had opened the fifth seal, I saw under the altar the souls of them that were slain for the word of God and for the testimony which they held. And they cried with a loud voice saying, how long, O Lord, holy and true, does thou judge and avenge our blood on them that dwell on the earth? Okay. And the white robes were given unto them, one uh, were given to every one of them. And it was said unto them that they should rest yet for a little season until their fellow servants and their brethren that should be killed as they were should be fulfilled. Why is God telling them wait? Because God does not want anyone to die and go to hell. God does not want anyone not to be saved. He does not rejoice in the death of a sinner. Even if Hitler was about to die and he prayed to God and God, he prays to God and tells him, Jesus, please save me. Jesus could still have saved him because he does not rejoice in the death of a sinner. And that's why God will bring the time of tribulation so that at least some people can be saved. Why would you wait all that so that you go through all these troubled times and all these to, uh, terrible times and the horrors of tribulation, why not get saved right now and go with the escape plan, which is there, which is the uh, rapture. Rapture is about to come. And the Bible tells us in the first Thessalonians, like I read to you, chapter two, verse nine, that we are not appointed to wrath. We are not appointed to wrath. We are already told that we are ready, ready, ready. So you can be saved right now and you escape all that. You may ask, how can I be saved? What can I, what do I need to do to be saved? The Bible says, believe in your heart that Jesus is Lord and you shall be saved. But then this believing is something that you need to understand. You cannot believe in something that you don't know. The Bible says in John 3, 16, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. But you may ask, how will I believe? How will I believe? You have to believe in something that you have understood, something that you have heard, okay? Like the Bible says in Ephesians uh, 1.13, in whom you trusted after that you heard the word of truth, the gospel of salvation. So you have to hear the word of truth, which is the gospel of salvation for you to be saved. So what is the gospel? The gospel is found in 1 Corinthians 15, 1 through 4. And it's all about how that Christ died for our sins. He was buried and rose again the third day according to the scriptures. How did Jesus die? He died at the cross. He shed his blood for you. Because without shedding of blood, there's no forgiveness of sins. He had to shed his blood for you. Why? Because the life of the flesh is in the blood. According to Leviticus 17, 11, the life of the flesh is in the blood. So he had to shed that blood so that you can get forgiveness. Why? Because the wages of sin is death and you are a sinner and someone had to die so that you can be saved. But someone 2000 years ago called Jesus, he, he came and he said, why would you die? Let me die for your sins. Let me take all the blame. Let me take all your sins. Let me do everything. Let me go through all the pain that you're supposed to go so that you don't go through the same. If only you believe that my death is not in vain, my death is for you to be saved. He said, ah, he said, God, hold on. Hold your horses, God, please hold on. I will die for these people. I will do it for them. Let me die for these people so that they, my death will have been their death. And if they trust that I've died on their part as a replacement, I've died, I've shed my blood for them, then they'll be saved. My brother, if you understand and you tell yourself that Jesus died for your sins, you understand that Jesus died for your sins. He was buried and rose again, according as it is written in, in, the, in the Bible, in 1 Corinthians 15, 1 through 4. You'll be saved. And once you have understood that and you have believed that in your heart, then confess it to God. The Bible says, if you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and you believe in your heart, first you have to believe, you believe, and then you confess out then you will be saved, okay? So just tell God, Jesus, I now have understood that you really died on my part. 
I was supposed to die. I was supposed to be the one who is dying at the cross. But Jesus, you had mercy on me and you died for me on that cross. You shed your blood for me. And now I understand it was not in vain. You died and you were buried and you rose again by the power of the Holy Spirit for me. And I accept it, Lord. And I accept that you died for me. And today, please be my Lord and my Savior. And when you say that, in Jesus' name, my brothers, you're saved. There's nothing else that you're left. Uh, you'll, be, you'll be saved, sealed, and sanctified, and rapture ready. God bless you. Have a blessed time. You can go through my other videos on YouTube and on Facebook, Keith Mwoki. I always uh, have videos every um, uh, we uh, Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, 9 p.m. I'm, I'm always uh, live on Facebook. And later on, I upload the same video on uh, YouTube. So guys, have a blessed time. Have a good time. See you next time, Friday, God willing, same place, same place, same time, okay? See ya.